Hey everyone, today I'm going to be doing the impossible and creating a pressure that's lower than an absolute zero vacuum of space. You heard me right, I'm going to be creating a negative absolute pressure. So I'm going to be creating a pressure so low that it's not just zero, it's actually negative, a negative absolute pressure. Now I'm not talking about a relative pressure here to like the relative to atmospheric pressure negative. I'm talking about relative to absolute zero vacuum, a negative pressure from there. That sounds impossible, but let me show you how it is actually possible using capillary tubes and a vacuum chamber. So in my previous video, I talked about capillary forces and talked about the pressures in a capillary tube. And in that video, I talked about the reason why water can climb up a capillary tube. Why does it stay higher than the level of water that's not in a small tube? And I showed that using this setup here where I have a bunch of tubes varying in diameter and showing that they achieve different heights in the tubes based on how small the diameter is. And in talking about the capillary forces, I talked about the pressure in the capillary tubes. I explained how the reason why in the small tube the liquid level is so much higher is because at the water-liquid interface, the pressure in the liquid is actually below atmospheric pressure. So the water stays raised up above there. Now the reason behind these pressure differences is due to the adhesion of water on glass and the contact angle that it forms. But that's not what causes it to stay lifted up like that or what causes it to actually flow in. What causes water to flow is pressure deltas. So that's why I chose to talk about it in terms of pressure. And in today's experiment, I'm going to be showing you how it's true, how no matter what your air pressure is above it, your pressure in your liquid is still lower than that pressure. And what that means is that you can actually achieve pressures lower than zero atmospheres. You can achieve negative pressures in the liquid. All right, so the pressures in the capillary tube look like this. P naught here is the atmospheric pressure. You can see outside the capillary tube that the liquid is at atmospheric pressure and the air is at atmospheric pressure. So both these pressures are equal. But in the capillary tube, something different is happening. The air is at atmospheric pressure, but inside the capillary tube, it's actually at a lower pressure than atmospheric pressure. But then as we go down the capillary tube, the pressure increases so that right here, the pressure is at P naught. So now there's no flow of liquid. And you can see that this is the reason why liquid even moves up a capillary tube in the first place. So for example, when you first put the capillary tube in the water, it looks like this. No movement has happened yet. But due to the adhesive forces of the glass on the water, the glass is basically pulling up the water, causing P1 to be a lower pressure than P0. And because P1 is a lower pressure than P0, it basically sucks in water. Because this is a higher pressure than this, so it pushes the water in here. And it's pushing the water into here due to the adhesion forces on the side, and it keeps sucking up water until it finally gets to this point where this bottom pressure is equal to atmospheric pressure. And then once this bottom pressure, due to the weight of the water on top of it, is equal to P naught, the flow stops. So you can see that this reduced pressure in the capillary force is absolutely necessary for it even to happen. If this weren't lower than the outside pressure, then water wouldn't get sucked up the tube in the first place. So we know that P1 must be a lower pressure than P naught in order for the capillary action to even happen. Now here's where it becomes really mind blowing. What if P naught is equal to zero atmospheres, a vacuum? Then that would mean that P1 is less than zero atmospheres. Okay, so I'm going to place my capillary tubes in the vacuum chamber. Let's see what happens under the vacuum now. Place the lid on. Okay, three, two, one. Vacuum's going down fast. We're at just a half an atmosphere right now. So this water has not been degassed. So there's dissolved air in there that's gonna start bubbling out soon. And then once the 
dissolved gas starts coming out, then we're going to start seeing the water boil if we get to a low enough pressure. Okay, now the water's boiling. You can see in the big tube that the water is boiling at the top, but as you go down lower, there's no boiling because that water is at a higher pressure due to the hydrostatic pressure. Okay, so now most of the dissolved air is out. Now I'm going to let the pressure back in, and then we're gonna do this experiment again so we can get rid of these air bubbles messing things up in the capillary tubes. Okay, we've really got the air out of it now. So now you can see that my pressure is at zero atmospheres in there. So there's a very, very low pressure. There's a vacuum in here, but you can see that my capillary tube is still raised. So what that means is that the liquid pressure is actually below an absolute vacuum. Now that sounds really weird to say that a pressure is lower than a complete vacuum. And the reason it sounds weird is because we're used to talking about pressures with gases. Now for a gas, you can never get lower than an absolute pressure of zero. But for a liquid and a solid, that's not the case. So what it means to say that a liquid has a negative pressure or a pressure lower than absolute zero atmospheres means that it's actually under tension. Now we're used to saying that solids can be under tension. You can pull on them and they usually can hold themselves together but liquids usually can't hold themselves together unless they're under a very specific setup where they don't cavitate or form water vapor bubbles, then you can actually pull on them. So now the reason this isn't boiling is because there are no nucleation points. So let me put some, so let me raise the pressure and then put something in there to give us some nucleation points and you'll see boiling in the big tube here. Okay, so I'm just gonna drop a toothpick in here now. Okay, so now this is really cool. What this means is that the pressure that is actually in this uh, capillary tube is lower than the pressure around it, than the air pressure. And what that means is that it's lower than an absolute vacuum. Okay, now let's let the air back in. Those bubbles co should collapse down to nothing pretty much. So this liquid that's at a lower pressure in the capillary tube actually has a name and it. it's called subpressure. Now subpressure, like I mentioned, is the reason why capillary action happens in the first place. Now I've talked about everything here in terms of pressure, but what's actually causing these pressure differences is the adhesive forces of the glass and the water. Without those forces present, then the pressure deltas wouldn't even happen. But what's making the flows actually happen is those pressure deltas. So that's why I preferred to talk about it in terms of pressure deltas and not just adhesive forces, which you usually hear it talked about. So how far below zero atmospheres can you actually get? Well, it depends on how small your tube is. For example, in the xylem of trees, the little tubes that through capillary force suck up water, in those tubes you can get upwards of negative 15 atmospheres of pressure. That's not relative pressure, that's absolute pressure, negative 15 atmospheres. Now it seems weird that the water wouldn't boil in that case, but in order to boil it has to have a nucleation point. Another thing from my last video that some people had a problem with is I compared the shape of the meniscus to a balloon blowing up in a tube and showing that the pressure above the meniscus was higher and the pressure in the, under, in the liquid below the meniscus was lower and that causes the shape that you see there, similar to a balloon in a tube. Now the question in all of this is what about mercury? Now mercury causes a meniscus that doesn't look like this, but looks like this instead. Well, because the way that mercury adheres to glass, it actually is repelled by the glass, it causes a, a positive pressure in a capillary tube and not a negative pressure. And so that causes the meniscus to be turned the other way. And in that case, my analogy still holds true with the balloon because 
The balloon is now the mercury that's at higher pressure and the tube is the air. Now the balloon analogy isn't perfect and it's really just an analogy, but it helps you remember what's at a higher pressure and what's at a lower pressure. And thanks for watching another episode of the Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell to be notified when my latest video's out. And thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.